Take your Bibles, turn them right side up, and then turn to Revelation chapter 3. I promise you this is the last church I'll deal with in Revelation. Because it is the last one. The church of Laodicea. Now, as I said when we started this uh, back in 1808, that uh, there are different theories about these seven churches. Some people believe that they...
Laodicean churches out there. Let's look at what makes a Laodicean church. Revelation 3, verse 14. Under the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen. Now let me address something while I'm here. Uh, you know, the internet is full of uh, uh, some good information, and the rest of it's just nuts garbage. Uh, there are people out there, and people have written me and asked me this question. Uh, a pastor, I watched a video, and it said that the word amen is a pagan term, that it refers to Amun, Amun Ra, the uh, <coughs> Egyptian god that Pharaoh worshipped. And that saying amen is a pagan thing. And I answered back and I said, if that's true, then Christ is a pagan God because that's his name. It's what it says. These things saith thee, amen. And what does the word amen mean? So be it, let it be so, let it be established, let it be true. We agree. Okay, that's, that's sort of the meaning of it. Yes? Uh, uh, Del McCurry said amen means sick em, brother. Yeah, it's like saying sick em to a dog. Yeah. Okay? Go get them, preacher. We agree with that. Amen. <laughs> These things saith the amen. The one, and I think Christ is saying, I'm the one who establishes it. I'm the one that makes it true. I'm the one that so bees it. Okay? So, just to... And, and, and it comes down to, do you believe your Bible or not? Do you believe your Bible? Or are you going to believe some idiot on the internet who's wanting to make all Bibles out to be wrong because he wants to live in sin and make everybody else out to be evil except him? There are people like that all over the internet who pass judgment on every church. All churches are bad. All churches are worshiping the beast. All churches are in it for money. All pastors are evil. All pastors, they're sold out to the government and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just, I'm sick of that stuff. And we will go to any church because they're all ungodly. No, you're the ungodly one. And you know what? It's probably good that you're not going to somebody's church. Because you'll cause problems. So anyway, these things say at the amen. The faithful and true witness. See, you either believe your Bible or you don't. The beginning of the creation of God. Does that mean Jesus was created? No. It means that through Him was the creation. The beginning of the creation of God. I know thy words. That thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. In other words, vomit. I'll vomit you up. I've heard sermons from, from good pastors, good preachers. And we ought to be on fire for Jesus. God wants us hot for Jesus Christ. Well, that's not really what he said here. I don't think he really defines what cold or hot means spiritually. You might say, well, I want to be on fire for Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, some say, well, that was a cold, dead church. I wouldn't go there. Okay. But I think there's a different idea behind this. What does the word lukewarm mean? What does it mean? And the definition, pretty much you're looking at the definition here. So what does lukewarm mean? Huh? Neither hot or cold. Neither hot or cold. It's the... It's the it's when you turn the cold on and then the hot and you have a combination of cold water and hot water 
mixing together to make warm water. Does that make sense to everybody? Now, uh, some years ago, an idea occurred to me, and it had to do with opposites in the Bible. And I just thought I would just study, and I, and I actually had notebooks, and I was making notes of things that were opposite one another in the Bible, and how God always clearly draws a line between opposites, and He separates them. He divides them one from another. So let's go to Genesis 1. It's displayed really in the first two days of creation. Genesis 1, verse 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And even right there, you have a differentiation. Heaven is heaven, and heaven is not earth. Earth is earth, and earth is not heaven. So when the earth was without form and void, darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light that it was good. Universally. All over the world. Light equals good. Darkness equals bad or evil. In movies. Old westerns. The bad guy always wears black. The good guys wear... The Lone Ranger wears sort of white clothes. Black, the bad guy wears black shirts, black pants. Okay? Uh, George Lucas did this in Star Wars. Darth Vader wore just all black. Okay? And that's to differentiate him from Luke Skywalker who always wore white. He was the good guy. It was good versus evil. God saw the light that it was good. God divided, watch this, God divided the light from the darkness. There is a clear difference between light and dark. They are divided one from another and it's either light or it's either dark. Now there is a, a time in the late evening, in the early morning, where there is a mixture of the two. Now I want you to notice that if you remember from Isaiah 14, when Isaiah is referring to Lucifer, he says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Well, morning, early morning, is a combination of light and darkness. There's still some light left. There's still some darkness left. Okay? And it, yes, it is okay to shoot a deer. Even if it ain't 630. Just throw that in there. If I see it, I'm going to shoot it. Okay? Uh, but anyway, he's the son of the morning. He's the mixture of the two. He's a, he is a, um, a fusion of opposites. Uh, verse 5, and God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Evening and morning. Day and night. God said, let there be a firmament, verse 6, in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. We have division. God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. God called the firmament heaven in the evening and the morning for the second day. So again, we have a division. We have water here on the earth, and then we have water up in the sky and there is an expanse or a firmament that is between those two. Come on in. Jason. No, come on in. My wife is going, is Jason here yet? No. Good to see you. So anyway, uh, we're divided from one another. Heaven is not earth and earth is not heaven. Okay? But some people want to join the two together, fuse them together. Uh, 
Then he said, uh, let's see here, verse 9. And God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called the seas, and God saw that it was good. The earth is not the sea, and the sea is not the earth. They are divided one from another. Dry is not wet, and wet is not dry. Do you understand? You see what he's doing here? Okay? God is clearly separating things that are different. Uh, there is a book written by us. Uh, a Baptist pastor, and it's about the King James Bible issue, and it was a pretty good book. He's called Things That Are Different Are Not the Same. And he compared the King James with what it said with what the modern translation said. And he said, all these pastors are trying to sell to everybody that uses the King James that the NIV is just a, it's just an update of the language. It's the same Bible. It's just updating the language a little bit. But when you read it and look at it, you clearly see that it, they are not the same thing. When I was teaching the uh, Kenyans in Kilimambogo, and I was showing them the difference between English Bibles, and then I told them that I learned what the phrase Son of God was in Swahili, Mwanawa Mungu. And then I said, Mwanawa Miungu. And they said, no, 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 that's Son of the Gods. And I said, okay, so who was in the fiery furnace? And they said, Mwanawa Mungu. I said, well, look in your Swahili Bible to make sure. And when they looked in their Swahili Bible, it said, Mwanawa Miungu, which means plural, gods. And they, I mean, they got it. Instantly, that whole church and that pastor got it. They understood immediately that their Bible had been messed with and it wasn't right. And the pastor actually stood up and said, I, I've had enough. I realize I've been preaching out of the book for 20 years, but I've not been preaching out of the Word of God. So we gave out King James Bibles to practically everybody in the place, including the pastor. See, they can read English. They just think I have an accent, which I don't have an accent. <laughs> right? So anyway, but they got it. They understood it. They knew that there was a bit. They knew that that was not right. They knew that there's that who was in the fiery furnace was not a son of the gods. And they were smart enough to realize the difference. Now you have people who are backing that statement who are uh, trying to say that these modern translations are actually better, and they're saying, well, Nebuchadnezzar was a pagan. And as a pagan, he understood that there were more than one God. So he said, a son of the gods, because that's how he thought. I'm, I'm buying that for a second. I think when you see Jesus, you're going to know exactly who he is. Amen. Amen. Now, Deuteronomy 22. You can turn there or look up on the screen. Notice this. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord, or, or, or the Lord thy God. Now, God would not be accepted in most churches. Most public schools, most civic groups, definitely not on the news. He would never be interviewed on the news because God said it's an abomination for a woman to appear as a man and for a man to appear as a woman. And was God right? Yes. Was God ever wrong? So, if you are a man, you are to dress as a man, appear as a man, have a haircut like a man, and be a man. If you are a woman, you are to dress as a woman, appear as a woman. 
Speak as a woman. Act as a woman. Because God said, we don't mix the two together. Now here's what's interesting. In Revelation 9, there's a group of devils that are released out of the bottomless pit. And the description of them is, is that they have the face of a man. But they have the hair of a woman. They're androgynous. They are male and female both. A few years ago, there is a, uh, a big talent show that is in Europe. It's called Eurovision. It's been going on for years. It's going on longer than American Idol. And uh, the guy that won it, can't, I can't remember his name, but he was his his stage presence was that he was androgynous. He was a man and he had a beard. But he had long hair like a woman and he always wore a dress on stage. And he won the contest that year as being the best singer. And his song was Rise Like a Phoenix. The Phoenix is a type of the Antichrist because it rises up out of the fire, out of the ashes, out of the pit. And uh, I, I took one look at that and I went, I know what spirit that is. The face of a man, the hair of a woman. I know what spirit. That spirit comes right out of hell and it is the spirit of Antichrist. And if you look at some of the Roman and Greek gods, and for that matter, the, the old Indian gods or Sumerian gods, many of them were androgynous gods. The god Bacchus, from where the word baccalaureate comes from, the god Bacchus was a god of wine and revelries and parties and drunkenness, and he was an effeminate male. He was an androgynous god. Dionysus is his Roman counterpart, and uh, or his Greek counterpart, and he also was an androgynous god, a male and female both together in the same body. And God clearly separates the two in the scriptures, does he not? And I've even there are even people such as. Kenneth Copeland, Rick Warren, and others who have tried to put forth the idea that God in heaven is both male and female. And that ticks me off. Makes me angry. And I would challenge you to show me anywhere in the scriptures where God is ever referred to in the feminine. God our mother. Christ our sister. So, um, back in the 90's, Zondervan wanted to release a gender neutral version of the NIV. They wanted to release it in America. And they did. And it went... Nobody, nobody wanted to buy it. But they persisted. And so they just kind of pulled it off the shelf and then they waited until they came up with a revision of the NIV called the TNIV, today's NIV, where basically, without any announcement, they just slipped in the gender neutral language uh, of the gender neutral Bible back from the 90s. And in places where it says brethren, it says brothers and sisters. But that's not what the that's not what the Greek text says. It's not even close. Uh, in places where it says now we are the sons of God, it replaces that with saying we are the children of God. It's androgenizing the 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 language of the Bible. And slowly but surely, people are accepting those concepts. And I believe that the Antichrist is going to be an androgynous God. I believe he's going to be, the book of Daniel says, he shall have no desire for women. 
because I think he's going to be half one. Okay? Uh, Matthew went to school with that Noah. What did he call herself? But the guy that wore a dress and wanted to be able to go in the girl's bathroom and the girl's locker room. And the students protested. And they said, we don't want that. The girls were going, we don't want him in the bathroom. And they had a big party for him, Hillsborough Park. And I took the camera over there and I just showed people. And he was getting an interview from NPR, National Public Radio, liberal. And they were throwing him all these softball questions. And I had a camera on him. And they were asking him these questions. And when they got done, I, I had him on camera and I said, so would it be okay for a male teacher to go into the girl's bathroom? He said, no. I said, would it be okay for a male student to go in the girl's bathroom? And he said, it wouldn't be right for a boy to go in the girl's bathroom. I'm not a boy. Lila. Lila. And that's what I named the video. You can find it on YouTube. I'm not a boy. But his genetics and his plumbing says he is. And the odd thing about it was, he had a, I don't know if you'd call it a boyfriend or girlfriend, that was a girl pretending to be a guy. <laughs> you talk about messed up confusion. So, how long ago was that, man? Okay, 2016. Jump to 2021, just recently, and a guy got arrested. His daughter in a public school got molested by a male student who wore a dress to school and a wig and was constantly going in the girl's bathroom, and the school had to let him go in the girl's bathroom, and he sexually assaulted two or three girls in that bathroom. And when the father raised a ruckus at the school board meeting, they arrested him. Crazy bunch. But God said, keep them separate. Deuteronomy 22.9 Thou shalt not sow thy vineyard with diverse seeds. Notice that. <laughs> Lest the fruit of thy seed which thou hast sown and the fruit of thy vineyard be defiled. Now, I absolutely believe 100% God knew we would be in an age where we would have the ability to take any type of DNA from any species, plant or animal, and insert it into the DNA of any other species, plant or animal. We're in that age right now. And look, and look at here. God wrote that down years ago. Thou shalt not plow with an ox and an ass together. Why? Because the, the ox is just going to be dragging the ass around. <laughs> okay. The ass is not going to contribute one bit to this thing. God said don't do it. Don't put them together. So in the New Testament, Paul says it like this. Be not unequally yoked. Together. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts as woolen and linen together. Woolen is from sheep, animal. Linen is from vegetation, plants, cotton. And God says, <clears throat> don't wear two different garments together. Now why would God say something like that? He's clearly teaching us to put difference between things that are opposite. Uh, turn to Joshua 24. This is a little bit small, so you will have to turn there in your Bible. Unless your eyes are really good. Joshua 24, verse 14. 
Now therefore fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which are which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And here, and here God said, Can you serve me, the one true God, and can you serve other gods at the same time? And the answer is no. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In other words, you're going to have to pick. Pick a side. Pick one side or the other. But don't think you can play both sides. Don't think you can do it. Um... And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Verse 17. For the Lord our God, He it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore we, uh, will we also serve the Lord, for He is our God, Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for He is an holy God, and He is a jealous God, and He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then He will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, He hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, You are witnesses against yourselves, and you have chosen you, the Lord, to serve it. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will be served, and this voice will be obeyed. So Joshua made a covenant with them that day, and set them in a statute, and an ordinance, and check them. In other words, Joshua said, Are you sure? They said, Yeah, we're positive. We're going to serve the Lord. Because Joshua said, You can't serve both. God will not let you get away with serving both. He will. He will. He will do you harm after he has done you good. He absolutely will. So, Elijah came unto the people and said, How long will Paul be between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. The people answered him not a word. The people didn't, couldn't decide who they were going to serve, Baal or God. But they can't serve both. They can't straddle the fence. Jesus said, No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. So, now we get back to what Jesus said. I would that you were either hot or cold. Does that make better sense now? One or the other. But you're lukewarm. You're trying to straddle the fence. You're trying to be both at the same time. And God consistently throughout scriptures says, no, you cannot do that. You cannot be that way. Pick one or pick the other. But don't try to be both. You're lukewarm and I will spew you out of my mouth. Let's go to prayer. Father, thank you for the lesson you've given us today. Give us things to think about in our heart. Next time we're tempted. Next time the devil tries to pull us away. Next time we think about trying to live a life of sin privately. And then act like a Christian publicly. Maybe nobody else will know, but God, you'll know. And you cannot be fooled. I know this. So, Father, I pray to your God that you would just deal with our hearts. And if there's anybody today, anybody today, Lord, struggling, halting between two opinions, God, you'd help them get it settled. Hopefully, Father, they would settle to serve you. Father, they can't do both. Bless your word. Bless the name of the Lord. Magnify your word even above your name. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said. Amen. Amen.